Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so um, I'm going to go through how we um, understand the behavioural tendencies of our employees and how we use that within the team to help grow them um, into, um, into the roles. Right. Um, so as Georgina um, mentioned, um, we've got areas of competence. So we look at health and safety, professional development, post excavation, field work and personal development. Um, so it's not just looking at the person, at the technical skills. Um, with employees, we look at their mindset, their leadership skills, their communication. Um, and a big part of that um, is using the DISC analysis tool. Um, so I'll just briefly go through the DISC analysis tool um, with you and how we use it within the company. Um, it is a very comprehensive tool, um, so by all means, um, go do further research after and have a look further into it. This is just a brief outline of um, what we cover with it. Um, so if you've not heard of this before, um, it's the behaviour profile model. It's widely used across the world um, and it helps you to understand your own behaviour style and those of others. Um, so we use it to create efficient um, and effective communication and build relationships. Um, so we use it quite a lot um, in different scenarios throughout the company. Um, so the four um, behaviour types are um, a high D, um, so that's a dominant character, a high I, which is an influencer, um, an S, which is steadiness, and a C for conscientious. So, um, I'll go into further details on what each of the profile, um, the tendencies um, of those in each profile. It is um, worth saying that they are tendencies, so it's not saying that everybody will um, portray that and those characteristics and that um, style all the time it is a tendency and it's saying that you can go into that, um, that mode. So this is what you get when you fill in a disk analysis tool. Um, so you get a wheel um, and a bar chart. Um, so on that, it plots your two styles. So we've all got a natural style. Um, so that if um, you are left to your own devices, so if you are within your own company, at home and at ease, that is how you would um, naturally, naturally, um, naturally be. And then your adapted is how you would adapt in a work situation. So as you can see from the wheel here, um, in a work situation, this um, employee um, would um, go more analytic and supportive. So this is probably someone in a management um a management role. So they'd be looking at detail, making sure that the details and there's um very accurate and precise um, details there and everything's covered. Um, as you can see from the bar graph, we've all got um, each a, a little bit of each tendency within us. It's just that we adapt um, and modify increase in different situations. And it might be that you reduce your high D in a work environment. Um, you might um, increase your high eye if you are in a group environment or in a group meeting. Um, so it's, we all adapt and modify um, throughout our day. We probably, we do it at home um, in every situation without even thinking. Um, maybe it's with the kids, getting them to put the shoes on, the socks on. Um, but it's bringing that into a working environment and how we can use that to our advantage. Um, so understanding, employees disc analysis the profile helps us put employees in the best role and so for example we've if um we've got employees that love talking love sharing the knowledge about archaeology they're probably a high eye so use them to their advantage so we would um have those um, those employees talking to schools and um, bringing fines and getting children and um, volunteers involved and engaging and interacting where you might have a high C that would be way out of the comfort zone doing that. So it's how we can use that to our to the team's advantage and maximise um, on their advantages. So looking at profiles in a little bit more detail. Um, so the four core, core behavioural tendencies. So you've got a high D. Um, that is very results focused, um, um, rapid at making decisions and then seek challenges. So your high D's will be good in meeting environments. Um, so making sure that you keep in the meeting um, to agenda um, and um, 
on track and your Heidi's are usually um, COOs and people in charge of running com uh, companies because you need to make sure that they're looking at the results and the big picture. Your high eyes are very outgoing and persuasive, people are orientated and optimistic, as I used the example earlier, um, they like being in the limelight um, and talking to other people. Um, your high C's are very patient, um, your, your ISs, sorry, your ISs are good um, facilitators of meetings. Um, they like to operate in a steady and even pace and they like everybody to be uh, getting on with each other. And your high C's are very um, data and analytical based. Um, so everything has to be precise and accurate. Your high C's, you often find that would be preferred to be looking at a spreadsheet um, than talking to people. We do need um, everybody, uh, we do need a team of um, all the styles um, to have a team working together. Um, I'm, I'm a high eye. Um, if you had a full team of me, we would be eating cookies and um, talking um, all day. So you need those other profiles to, um, to have a comprehensive team and to balance it out. So how do we use DISC in ARS? Um, so we use it um, to help with leadership. So the DISC reports helps our line managers understand their team um, and it gives them tips on how to engage with others and how to motivate them. We use it to communicate. Um, so um, in various ways, it might be that we're having some conflict with an employee or um, something's just not quite gelling. We'll use it to understand how um, people like to be communicated to and what their needs are. Um, for example, if you're a high C, you will need a very detailed um, numbered instruction list, one to 10. Um, so you know that where your boundaries are and what job's next to do. Whereas if you've got a high I, given a high I instruction, um, you may be able to just say, uh, just go over and um, excavate over there so it's understanding how um employees um are more comfortable and what they um how they're motivated and how they are engaged um so we use it to um relieve stress um which is obviously a high topic at the moment um so it sets as i mentioned it sets out people's needs and wants um and if you um as you've um, experienced when you're dealing with people that are under high stress you can easily increase that tension so understanding their needs and what would um engage and motivate them to relax and reduce that tension will be good for um relationships we use it for self-awareness. Um, so we um, we do different um, training sessions um, in-house. Um, we do, we have fun with it. <laughs> it's not a, a structured um, session. Um, we have, um, we do games like Guess Who? So we'll put the, 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 like the wheels out there and have people guessing which manager um, or which employee would fit um, in that wheel. Um, and we use it to build teams. So, um, Raising awareness in the team. So if we, we get a team to build their dream team, um, we call it a power team. So you'd have to um, understand other employees' um, strengths as well as your own and what you would bring to the team. So you'd have to bring a high D, a high I, I, S and a high C. Um, and then it helps you understand what traits um, people bring to the team and how you would use those in a team environment. Uh, we use it to build effective teams, as I just mentioned with the, um, the little um, exercise that we do. Um, we use that to help uh, build our teams for projects. So we'd make sure that we um, are covering all bases with the, um, with the DISC profiles. We know that if we build a team um, that's got a combination of all the profiles on there, then the, all those strengths are going to be utilised and it's going to be a, a good team working environment. Um, as I mentioned, we do training workshops um, to embed the principles and put them into practice. So the training starts from day one. Um, so employees will do their disc profile um, on the very first of a day of induction and, and it's taken with them throughout. We also use the tools to increase emotion, emotional intelligence um, and using that alongside the tool um, does um, help people when they're um, developing in their roles and going into leadership roles. 
So looking at patient directedness, um, so we use the, uh, as you can see, there's um, fast paced, slower paced and task oriented people oriented um, on the grid. So we use this to best position people and make sure they're right for the role. So your high eyes um, are very people orientated and fast paced. Um, so you'll find that they're usually good sales, um, sales managers, uh, marketing, they tend to be marketing. Um, whereas your S's are very task oriented and slow paced, so they're going to look at the details and so maybe accountants would sit in that. Um, obviously, we've all got us on different personalities, um, so we will differ from these slightly, but we use this to make sure that people are in the right role um, and we're supporting them in that role best we can. So effective teams. Um, so the force that everyone from the four styles bring different perspectives to the group. Um, so we all communicate, influence, and make decisions different depending on our profile. So the key to an effective team is how diverse and targeted you are, but also how we adapt to build you are. So if employees are more inclined to adapt to different roles, um, uh, different profiles, sorry, then it makes a more, um, more effective team. So success and failure of a team depends on how well they adapt to the team members and how they match the purpose for the critical task. So as um, I mentioned with the um, high eye that might go and do your, communi uh, your communication with the clients and um, customers, um, it's putting those people in the best um, best positions to get the, the work complete. So you might have your high C looking at paperwork and making sure that the details are um, correlated correctly. Um, so success though, right? Um, so we get a lot of feedback from uh, the digital profiles. We usually ask people to rate um, how accurate they think the profile is for them. Um, but we get between 85% and 95%. So you can see the um, the results that are high. So the, the survey is telling us a lot of um, constructive um, and accurate information, which helps us then use that to adapt to and care with uh, employees and people. So we've used it, for example, in, um, in mediation um, terms. So when um, we've had two employees that have just don't seem to be gelling right, both in leadership positions. Um, and when we've got them to look through the profiles, um, it turns out that the, the profiles are very similar, um, both are wanting to take that leadership position, but understanding each other and understanding that has helped them adapt to their communication. Um, and it's just taking attention out of um, the situation. Um, we've had um, an employee come to induction and very hesitant about doing the profile and thinking it'd put them in a box and they'd only get spoke to in a certain way because they're in this uh, pinhole um, and then um, a couple of weeks later they've come back saying it has really helped them in the personal life as well as the professional um, setting um, and that understanding um, the drivers behind some of people's behaviours um, has helped them um, gel and um, have those um, more honest and open um, conversations. So um, even someone um, came back from a senior position saying that now they understand um, why their husband prefers them to not tell them the story behind everything that's happened in the day and just get to the point. Um, and it helps, it helps in both the professional and the um, personal setting. And then just a couple of the success stories that we've had. Um, so to finish the, to finish the presentation, um, we're looking at the limitations of this. Um, so the obviously is positives um, and opportunity areas with um, everything. So we're not saying that DISC is gospel. Um, we're far more complicated um, than a survey can tell us. Um, we use it um, as a base and then we build on that. So we do look at people's behaviours, people's individual tendencies. Um, and it could be the situation's different. So we all... Um, we, well, we all um, adapted and changed um, during COVID, obviously we're during a pandemic, um, and a different situation. So uh, when people fall in love and meet, uh, meet uh, partners, we all change how we are. Um, there's a lot of crazy things out there that do help us uh, do changes in how we, how we um, act in certain situations. So we're not saying that it is possible, but it is a good basis um, for starting those conversations and being open and honest. We, we are open and honest with guys. We have a team wheel. So every employee at ARS is plotted on a wheel and we send that to the staff so we're very transparent and then it helps even trainees and um archaeological officers pick up that report and think right okay so in my communications with Linda this is what she wants to say and this is how I'm going to best get across to her. Um, so it's and it helps us with the self-knowledge so understanding ourselves helps us um understand how um, we can adapt and how we we are driven and um, and how we can develop on that so for our personal development and where we want to go and where we see where we see ourselves it helps push those guys um push through into your comfort zone. So if someone is not a natural speaker, um, they don't like being in group environments, they can pick up that, fo uh, that phone and the profile and best understand how they can adapt without being pushed too much out of the comfort zone. Um, so it increases emotional intelligence 
positions and it is context specific as I mentioned we'll adapt to every style uh, when we change positions so when people are promoted we do look at the profile again um, to see how they've adapted um, especially their adaptive style in a work setting um, the, we do become different um, and act different in different roles that we're in so you might need to be more analytic if you're moving into a financial role um, so it is it does change so we do um, suggest that employees update it regularly um, and that is the end of the presentation so thank you for uh, thank you for listening